In the Chapter 16 lecture, we will review one-way ANOVA tests. This is the most basic type of ANOVA test. Historical background. In 1918, R.A. Fisher developed ANOVA tests while working at the Rothenstedt Experimental Station, where he was conducting agricultural research. In 1925, Fisher presented this technique in Statistical Methods for Research Workers. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. Fisher's research question, do different treatments of crop fertilizers produce different average or mean yields? This lecture has seven objectives. One, you will understand that ANOVA tests are used to compare two or more sample means. Two, we will conduct a one-way ANOVA test by hand and with Excel. We will see that using Excel is much faster and more accurate. Three, we will conduct an a priori statistical power calculation using G power. Four, we will calculate and interpret two different standardized effect sizes, eta squared and Cohen's F. Five, you will understand that ANOVA is an omnibus test. This means that when you are testing three or more treatments, the ANOVA test will not tell you which, if any, of the treatment pairs are unequal. You can use ANOVA to test just two treatments, which, in that case, you would know which treatment means are unequal should the null hypothesis be rejected. Six, we will conduct a post hoc analysis should the null hypothesis be rejected. Seven, other types of ANOVA test will be identified. Let's turn to what an ANOVA test does. ANOVA tests are used to determine whether at least one pair of treatment means are unequal. ANOVA tests whether two or more treatments have equal means by analyzing the ratios of variance three ways. Here are the three sources of variation. The first is total variation. The second is random variation. And the third is treatment variation. ANOVA is an omnibus test. This means that when testing more than two treatments and the null hypothesis is rejected, the test does not tell us which treatment pairs are unequal. To answer that question, we must conduct a post hoc analysis. There are a variety of such analyses. We will use Fisher's least squared differences confidence intervals because it is an easy analysis to conduct using Microsoft Excel. What are treatments? Treatments are either qualitative or quantitative categories. Treatments are also considered the independent or predictor variables. ANOVA requires at least two treatments, although most ANOVA tests have three or more treatments. The outcomes or measurements of the treatments are quantitative, interval or ratio variables. These measures are considered the dependent or response variables. What is total variation? Total variation is the sum of the square differences between each observation and the grand mean, which is symbolized as x bar sub g. The grand mean, x bar sub g, is the mean of all variables regardless of treatment. Excel calls total variation total, but it is also known as total SS or SS total. What is random variation? Random variation is called the sum of the squares within, or SSW. It is the sum of the square difference between each observation and its treatment, or sample mean, which is symbolized as x bar sub t. Excel calls this source of random variation within groups, or SSW. Random variation is also known as ER, sum of the square ER, and SSE. The third source of variation is treatment variation, or the sum of the squares between, or SSB. SSB equals total variation minus SSW. Treatment variation has numerous names. Excel uses the term between groups. It is also known as between samples, treatments SST, or factors. ANOVA follows the F distribution. As we saw in Chapter 15, F distributions are defined by degrees of freedom in the numerator and in the denominator. 
Here is a screenshot of a critical values table for F at a 5% significance level. Degrees of freedom in the numerator are shown in the columns. Degrees of freedom in the denominator are shown in the rows. ANOVA tests are based on three critical assumptions. One, the treatments are independent. This means that any treatment measure cannot be dependent on measures from another treatment. Two, the data in all treatments must approximate a normal distribution. A normal distribution, you will recall, is a symmetrical distribution centered on the mean. Three, treatments must have roughly equal variances. You will recall from chapter 15, this is called homogeneity of variance. Requirement one, treatments are independent. Independence, you will recall, means that the measurement of one treatment does not affect the measurements in another treatment. Independence is assured with good research design that randomly assigns subjects to treatments. Requirement two, normal distribution. When the treatment data are not normally distributed, ANOVA may provide misleading results. The central limit theorem helps ensure the treatment distributions approximate a normal distribution when each treatment has at least 30 observations. ANOVA tests are robust, just like t-tests. This means that the test may provide useful results even when the data are somewhat skewed. There are several ways to determine whether the data are normally distributed. We can use graphic methods to estimate whether the data are normally distributed. Two graphs can be useful, one histograms, two quantile, quantile, or QQ plots. Here are two histograms. The histogram on the left shows a normal or symmetrical distribution. The histogram on the right shows a non-normal, skewed, or asymmetrical distribution. QQ plots show a 45 degree line on an XY scatter diagram. The closer the XY variables are to the 45 degree line, the closer the distribution is to a normal distribution. The distribution on this QQ plot could be considered a normal distribution. While these graphic methods may aid judgment, they lack scientific rigor. There is a chi-square test for the normality of a distribution. This test will be covered in Chapter 17 of Clear-Sighted Statistics. There are also two more rigorous tests for normality. The Shapiro-Wilk test and the Komogorov Smirnoff test. Sophisticated statistics software like SPSS, SAS, STATA, and R can run these tests very quickly. These tests, however, are beyond the scope of an introductory statistics course. The third requirement is the treatments must have roughly equal variances. Equality of variance can be tested with the Levine or Brown Foresight tests. Sophisticated statistical software can perform these tests quickly. These tests, however, are beyond the scope of an introductory statistics class. The ratio of highest to lowest treatment variance should be no more than 4 to 1, although some commentators suggest 5 to 1. When the treatments have unequal sample sizes, the ratio of variance should not exceed 1.5 to 1. When the equality of variance assumption is violated, use Welsh's ANOVA test, which is a non-parametric test. Do not use the Kerskow-Wallace H test because this test requires homogeneity of variance. These non-parametric tests are beyond the scope of an introductory statistics class. Let's compare ANOVA tests to the two-sample t-tests for independent means. ANOVA is actually an extension of the two sample t tests for independent means. F equals t squared. The big advantage of the ANOVA test is that it can compare more than two sample means simultaneously without the buildup of type 1 error. When using a two sample t test, we would have to conduct three tests if there were three treatments, six tests if there were four treatments, 10 tests if there were five treatments and 15 tests if there were six treatments. When there are four samples, A, B, C, and D, six two-sample t-tests would have to be conducted. A versus B, A versus C, A versus D, B versus C, 
B versus D, and C versus D. T tests in the buildup of type 1 errors. When using a 5% significance level, the probability of running six tests with no type 1 error is 0.95 to the 6th power, or 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, which equals 0.735, or 73.50%, not 95%. The probability of at least one type 1 error is 26.5%, found by 100% minus 73.5%, not 5%. Characteristics of F distributions. 1. The critical value and test statistic will always be a non-negative number, which is to say greater than or equal to 0. 2. As a result, F tests are always right tail tests. How one-way ANOVA works. Here is the structure of the ANOVA table. On the left side of the ANOVA table, there are three sources of variation. One, between groups or SSB. Two, within groups or SSW. And three, total. Moving one column to the right, there are three types of degrees of freedom. The first degrees of freedom is between the groups defined as k or the number of treatments minus 1. This is the degrees of freedom in the numerator. The second degrees of freedom is within groups, defined as the total number of observations regardless of the treatment minus 1. This is the degrees of freedom in the denominator. These degrees of freedom are used to calculate the critical value of f. The third degrees of freedom is degrees of freedom total and is defined as n minus 1, the total number of observations minus 1, or the sum of the two other degrees of freedom. Moving one column to the right are mean squares. There are two mean squares. MSB, or mean squares between groups, is found by SSB over k minus 1, or its degrees of freedom. MSW, or mean squares within groups, is found by SSW over n minus k, or its degrees of freedom. And finally, the test statistic f is a simple fraction. Mean squares between groups over mean squares within groups. To complete the ANOVA table, start with the sum of the squares column. The first of three calculations is total, which is the sum of each random variable minus the grand or overall mean squared. The next step is to calculate sum of the squares within groups or SSW. This is the sum of each random variable in a treatment minus the treatment mean squared. The third and easiest step is to calculate the sum of the squares between groups or SSB. SSB equals total minus sum of the squares within groups. Step two, finding the degrees of freedom. This step can be conducted before calculating the three sum of the squares. As previously discussed, there are three different degrees of freedom. The first is for the sum of the squares between groups. This is for the top row of the ANOVA table, which is the numerator. It is found by k minus 1, where k is the number of treatments. The second degrees of freedom is for the sum of the squares within groups. This is the second row of the ANOVA table, and it is the degrees of freedom in the denominator. It is found by the total number of observations regardless of treatment, n, minus the number of treatments, or k. To repeat, these two degrees of freedom are used to find the critical values for f, as well as calculate the two mean squares. The third degrees of freedom are for total. It is found by n minus 1, where n is the total number of observations regardless of treatment. It can also be found by adding the two other degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for total are not used for calculating the F-test statistic. Step 3. Moving one column to the right, we find the two mean squares. The first is mean squares between groups. It is found by the sum of the squares between groups over k minus 1, which is the degrees of freedom. The second is mean squares within groups. It is found by the sum of the squares within groups over n minus k, which is its degrees of freedom. And finally, we move one column to the right 
to calculate the value of the F-test statistic. It is a simple fraction, mean squares between groups over mean squares within groups. What is missing from the ANOVA table calculated by hand? Five important calculations are missing. One, summary statistics for each treatment are missing. Two, the critical value of F for the selected significance level is missing. Three, the p-value is missing. Four, the a priori statistical power calculation is missing. This calculation, by the way, should be done before the data are collected. Five, neither Edda's square or Cohen's F effect sizes have been calculated. Let's turn to the null and alternate hypotheses for an ANOVA test. The null hypothesis states that all treatment means are equal. Just like Z and T test, the null hypothesis uses mathematical notation, equal signs, and the Greek symbol for the population mean mu. This chart illustrates the null hypothesis. It shows three treatments with non-significant differences from the grand mean. The alternate hypothesis states that at least one pair of treatment means are unequal. Unlike the one and two sample test we studied so far, the alternate hypothesis is not written using mathematical notation or Greek symbols. The text of the alternate hypothesis should be framed in the context of the research problem. In cases where there are only two treatments, the alternate hypothesis could be written with mathematical notation. Mu1 does not equal mu2. It is a very serious mistake to write the alternate hypothesis using a string of not equal signs. This is because only one pair of treatment means needs to be unequal to reject the null hypothesis. Scenario 1 shows one treatment mean that is not equal to the means of the other two treatments. In this case, the null hypothesis would be rejected. In Scenario 2, all three treatments have unequal means. The null hypothesis would be rejected. To repeat, ANOVA is an omnibus test. This means that when there are more than two treatments and we reject the null hypothesis, we do not know which pairs of treatments are unequal. In such cases, we must run a post hoc analysis to find out which treatment pairs are unequal. Let's conduct a one-way ANOVA test by hand. Step 1, Test Setup. Gotham Sprockets Mix Finely Machined Sprockets. A senior executive wants to find out which of three production methods, X, Y, and Z, yields the highest hourly production rate. The experiment. Experienced machinists are randomly assigned to use one of the three production methods. The research question. Does one production method yield significantly higher results? Data are collected. Here are the data along with the size of the samples, the treatment means, and the treatment variances. Already we can tell an important step is skipped. An a priori statistical power analysis should have been conducted to determine the necessary sample size. This is a very serious mistake. Unfortunately, most introductory statistics books skip this crucial step. We can run an a priori statistical power analysis using g-power. A total sample of 177 observations is needed to achieve 80% power. Our sample has only 28 observations. Our test is underpowered. Our sample is too small. But on a positive note, creating an ANOVA table for such a small data set will not take too long. G-Power has four input parameters. The first is Cohen's F effect size. This effect size has been estimated at 0 0.2359, which is a medium effect. The second input is the alpha error probability, which is the significance level. The significance level has been set at 0 0.05 or 5%. The third input is the desired level of statistical power, which has been set at 0 0.8 or 80%. And the fourth input is the number of groups or treatments, which is three. We can also run an a priori power calculation using the calculator found on the Statistics Kingdom website. Again, given the estimated effect size of 0 0.2359, a sample of 177 is required to achieve 80% power. Step two, select the significance level. Again, this is our tolerance of a type one error or a false positive. 
a 5% significance level has been selected. Step 3. State the null and alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis. The population mean for method X equals the population mean for method Y equals the population mean for method Z. The alternate hypothesis. At least one pair of treatment means are not equal. Step 4. Compose the decision rule. First, the critical value for F must be found. Degrees of freedom in the numerator is 2, found by K, the number of treatments, 3 minus 1. Then find the degrees of freedom in the denominator, found by N minus K, 28 minus 3, the answer is 25. Using the critical values table for F at a 5% significance level, the critical value for F is at the intersection of two degrees of freedom column and the 25 degrees of freedom row. The critical value is 3.39. Excel can also be used to find the critical value of F. The Excel function is f.inv.rt. This function has three arguments. One, the significance level or alpha. Two, the degrees of freedom in the numerator, and three, the degrees of freedom in the denominator. Excel reports the answer as 3.38519993, which is rounded off to 3.39. Using Excel to find the critical values for F is very handy because the ANOVA critical values tables are often missing specific combinations of degrees of freedom. In addition, Excel's f.inv.rt function is not limited to significant levels of 5% and 1%. Here is the decision rule. Reject the null hypothesis if f is greater than 3.39. The red tail marks the rejection region. Remember, ANOVA tests are always right tail tests. Step 5. Find the value of the test statistic, p-value, and effect size. Some caveats are in order. 1. The treatment samples are too small to achieve sufficient statistical power. 2. Calculating ANOVA by hand is very time consuming. 3. Excel completes ANOVA tables very quickly. Using Excel or another statistics app is a good idea. It is difficult to calculate p-values by hand and you cannot estimate p-values using the critical values table for F. Excel can calculate the p-values for f in seconds. We have already found the three degrees of freedom measures, so we will now calculate the three sum of the squares. First, we will calculate the sum of the squares total, which Excel labels as total. To do this, we must find the grand or overall mean. We add all random values and divide by the total number of observations regardless of treatment. The grand mean is 52.61. The next step is to subtract the grand mean from each random variable. Please note these numbers are rounded. We then square each deviation from the grand mean and then sum them. Total equals 724.68. We then add total to the ANOVA table. We then calculate the sum of the squares within groups. SSW equals the sum of each random variable minus its treatment mean squared. The treatment mean for method X is 53.8, for method Y is 51, and for method Z is 52.89. The table on the right shows the random values minus the respective treatment means. We now square X minus the treatment means, and then we sum the square deviations from the treatment means. SSW equals 686.49. We add sum of the squares within groups to the ANOVA table. We then calculate the sum of the squares between groups. The formula is total minus SSW. SSB, the sum of the squares between groups, equals 38.19. We add SSB to the ANOVA table. We then move to the right and calculate the two mean squares, mean squares between groups and mean squares within groups. Mean squares between groups is 19.095 found by 38.19 over 2. Mean squares within groups is 27.46 found by 686.49 over 25. We now calculate F which is found by mean squares between groups over mean squares within groups. 
The value of f is 0 0.6954, which is a very tiny test statistic. We will use Excel to get a precise calculation of the p-value. To calculate the p-value, we use Excel's f.dist.rt function. This function has three arguments. One, the value of the f-test statistic. Two, degrees of freedom in the numerator. And three, degrees of freedom in the denominator. The p-value is 50.83%. This is an enormous p-value. Next, we will calculate eta square effect size. Eta square is found by the sum of the squares between groups over total, which are sourced from the ANOVA table. 38.19 over 724.68 equals 0 0.0527. This is a small effect. We also need to calculate Cohen's F effect size. Cohen's F is the effect size measure used by G-Power and Statistics Kingdom statistical power calculators. Cohen's f is the square root of eta squared over 1 minus eta squared. Eta squared equals 0 0.2359 or 23.59 percent, which is a small effect. Our decision failed to reject the null hypothesis given the extremely low f value of 0 0.6954 and the very high p value of 50.38 percent. There is no evidence to support the proposition that at least one pair of treatments have unequal means. Management should be concerned about the lack of statistical power. If they think that this is an important issue, the test should be rerun with a much larger sample. Let's conduct a one-way ANOVA test using Excel. Why use Excel? Conducting an ANOVA test by hand is slow and tedious. Excel constructs the basic one-way ANOVA table in a few seconds. Excel also calculates the p-value. But Excel's ANOVA tool has serious shortcomings. It does not calculate effect size. It does not perform a post hoc analysis when necessary. And it does not calculate a priori statistical power. Step 1 Test Setup A large mall has three hot beverage stands. Jittery Joe's Caffeine, Caffeine Carl's Espresso, and Muria Bristol's Old English Tea. The research question, which stand has the highest average daily sales? Here is an a priori power analysis conducted with G-Power. Cohen's F effect size is estimated to be 0 0.25. This analysis should have been done before the data were collected. This a priori statistical power analysis has four inputs. The first is the estimate for Cohen's F effect size, 0 0.25. The second is the significance level, 0 0.05 or 5%. The third is the desired level of statistical power, 0.8 or 80%. The fourth is the number of treatments, 3. To achieve 80% statistical power, a total sample size should have 159 observations. A sample of daily sales receipts for 66 days were taken for each stand. These stands are the treatments, and they are independent. Total sample size is 198, which should be sufficient to achieve 80% statistical power, given the a priori calculation was for a total of 159 observations. This assumption is premised on the proposition that the estimate of Cohen's F is not too far off. Step 2, a 5% significance level, is selected. Step 3, state the null and alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis, the population mean or mu for Jittery Joe equals mu for Kathleen Carl equals mu for Marine Bristol. The alternate hypothesis, at least one pair of treatment means are unequal. Step 4, compose the decision rule. To do that, we must find the critical value of f with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 195 in the denominator at a 5% significance level. There are 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator found by 3 treatments minus 1. There are 195 degrees of freedom in the denominator found by the total number of observations or n, 198, minus 3 treatments. The critical value for F at a 5% significance level with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 195 in the denominator is 3.04.
This combination of degrees of freedom is not found on the critical values table. It was found using Excel's f.inv.rt function. Excel's single factor ANOVA tool, however, will also report the critical value for f. Using the f.inv.rt function is, therefore, unnecessary. The decision rule? Reject the null hypothesis if f is greater than 3.04. The red tail marks the rejection region. Excel's ANOVA single factor tool will construct the ANOVA table very quickly. Excel will also calculate the p-value. Unfortunately, this tool will not find effect size, a priori statistical power, or perform a post hoc analysis. Once the icon for the data analysis tool has been clicked on, select ANOVA single factor. This is another name for a one-way ANOVA test. This is the first of many statistical analyses Excel can perform. Once you select the ANOVA tool, the input screen comes up. Enter the input range. This is the range of cells in Excel that holds the data. Because the data are grouped in columns, make certain that columns is activated. Place a check in the box that says Labels. Checking this box means the range of cells you selected includes a column label. Doing so will make your result easier to understand. Alpha is the significance level. Enter 0.05. Enter the desired output option. Cell E1 was selected. This will place the ANOVA table in cell E1 on the Excel worksheet that contains the data. Here is the output. Please note, Excel reports the summary for each of the three treatments. Excel reports the sample size, n, which it calls counts, the sum, which is not especially useful, and the treatment means and treatment sample variances. Below the summary statistics is the ANOVA table. Please note, Excel provides the p-value along with the critical value for f at the selected significance level. Here is what we know based on the summary statistics. One. Muriel Bristol's average daily sales are higher than those of Jittery Joe and Kathleen Carl. Sales for Kathleen Carl and Jittery Joe are nearly equal. Two, the ratio of the lowest variance to the highest variance is 1 to 2.1. It is within acceptable limits for the equality of variance assumption. The test design ensures that all three treatments are independent. The central limit theorem ensures that the treatment data approaches normality, given that the sample sizes are greater than 30. All three ANOVA requirements are met. As previously noted, Excel's ANOVA tool does not calculate effect size. Here are the calculations of eta squared and Cohen's F effect size using Excel. Eta squared effect size is 6.55%, which is a medium effect. Eta squared is found by SSB over total. The value of Cohen's F is 26.47%. This is a medium effect. Cohen's F is found by the square root of eta squared over 1 minus eta squared. Step 6, decide and report. Our decision, we have sufficient evidence to conclude that at least one treatment pair has unequal average daily sales, with an F value as high as 6.832 and a p-value as low as 0.14%, the null hypothesis is rejected. There is statistical significance. Which treatment means are unequal? A post hoc analysis is needed to answer that question. There are a variety of post hoc analyses. Excel lacks a post hoc analysis tool, but we can build one using Excel's built-in functions. The post hoc analysis we will use is Fisher's least square differences confidence intervals. We construct confidence intervals for each combination of two treatments. When the lower confidence limit is negative and the upper confidence limit is positive, there is no difference in the treatment means. But when both the lower and upper confidence limits are negative, or both are positive, there is a significant difference in the treatment means. We can use Excel's COMBIN function to determine the number of treatment pairs. The COMBIN function has two arguments, one, the total number, and two, the number chosen. Based on using Excel's COMBIN function, there are three treatment pairs. 
Here is the formula for LSD confidence intervals. Add the value of the two sample means being compared, plus or minus the t value, times the square root of the mean squares within groups taken from the ANOVA table, times 1 over the sample size for the first treatment, plus 1 over the sample size for the second treatment. To repeat, here is how to interpret LSD confidence intervals. When the lower confidence limit is negative and the upper confidence limit is positive, the true treatment means are equal. When both the lower and upper confidence limits are negative, the two treatment means are unequal. And when both the lower and upper confidence limits are positive, the two treatment means are unequal. With three treatments, three confidence intervals are needed. One, Jittery Joe versus Caffeine Carl. Two, Jittery Joe versus Marine Bristol. Three, Caffeine Carl versus Marine Bristol. Here is the Fisher's LSD confidence interval for Jittery Joe and Caffeine Carl. Their cells are essentially equal because the lower confidence limit is negative and the upper confidence limit is positive. Here is the LSD confidence interval for Jittery Joe and Marine Bristol. There is a significant difference in sales because both the lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit are negative. Finally, here is the LSD confidence interval for caffeine coral marine bristol. There is a significant difference in sales because both the lower confidence limit and upper confidence limit are negative. Now let's quickly review other types of ANOVA tests. One way repeated measures ANOVA. These ANOVA tests make repeated measures over time. Here is an example. A pharmaceutical company testing two or more medications for controlling adult onset diabetes may test blood sugar of participants several times a day. These are the repeated measures. Such tests are also known as within-subject ANOVA and ANOVA for correlated samples. Two-way ANOVA without replication is an ANOVA test with two sets of independent variables or treatments. Excel's data analysis tool pack can conduct this test. Two-way ANOVA with replication is an ANOVA test with two sets of independent variables or treatments. Replication means the two treatments have repeated measures. Excel's data analysis tool pack can conduct this test. Factorial ANOVA is like two-way ANOVA test with additional independent variables, treatments, or factors. MANOVA, or multivariate analysis of variance, is an ANOVA test with more than one dependent variable. ANACOVA is analysis of covariance. It tests the main and interaction effects of categorical variables on a continuous dependent variable. MANACOVA is multivariate analysis of covariance. It is an extension of ANACOVA for multiple dependent variables. The Kurskal-Wallace H test is a non-parametric version of the one-way ANOVA test. Welsh's ANOVA is a non-parametric ANOVA test used when the homogeneity of variance assumption is violated. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.